The smartest fighter jets in the world are keeping a secret, and it's not about their engines. Welcome to War Tech Zone. If you think the key to winning a dogfight is raw speed, you're thinking about the last war. For decades, that's exactly what everyone believed. Bigger engines, more thrust, faster speeds. Countries spent billions trying to build the ultimate power plant. But in today's air combat, speed doesn't guarantee victory. In fact, focusing on the engine might be the biggest mistake a military can make. There's a smarter path, a different kind of upgrade. It's cheaper, faster, and proven in combat. And it all started with a small country that had no other choice, Israel. You see, Israel lives in a tough neighborhood. Threats can appear at any moment. Its air force is its first line of defense. It needs to be ready. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That created a massive problem. A traditional fighter jet upgrade takes years. You tear the jet apart. You install a new, more powerful engine. You test it. You certify it. For a country like Israel, that's time it simply does not have. Its jets cannot be in a hangar for a 5-year upgrade. They need to be in the sky, ready to fly a mission tonight. So, Israeli engineers and military planners had to think differently. They asked a simple yet radical question. What if we don't touch the engine at all? What if we leave the old reliable engine right where it is and upgrade everything else around it? This idea wasn't about being cheap. It was about being smart. It was about being ready. This brain over brawn philosophy would change modern air power forever, and it explains why some of the most advanced and lethal fighter jets in the Middle East are flying with the same power plants they had 20 years ago. Let's talk about why changing an engine is such a nightmare. An engine isn't like changing a car battery. You can't just unplug the old one and plugging the new one. The engine is the heart of the aircraft. It's deeply connected to everything. The air intakes are designed for its specific airflow. The fuel lines and tanks are calibrated for its consumption. The flight control computer is programmed for its exact thrust and response. The very frame of the jet is built around its weight and shape. When you put in a new engine, you don't just change one thing, you change everything. You have to redesign the air intakes, you have to reinforce the fuselage to handle new stresses, you have to rewrite thousands of lines of flight software. And then, the real test begins. Years and years of flight tests, thousands of hours to prove the new combination is safe and stable. All the while, that jet is out of service, it can't defend your airspace, it can't go on missions. For Israel, that's an impossible risk, a risk they decided to completely avoid. Instead, they looked at the actual problem. In a modern combat scenario, is a lack of engine power the real weakness for an older fighter jet? The answer, surprisingly, is often no. Most air-to-air -air missiles are fired from dozens of miles away. The jet doesn't need to outrun the enemy, it needs to see the enemy first. It needs to process information faster, it needs to connect with its allies. The real limitations weren't in the engine bay, they were in the cockpit, they were in the radar, they were in the computer systems. This was the key insight. The bottleneck wasn't mechanical, it was informational. An older jet might have a powerful engine, but it had a weak radar, slow computers, and no way to talk to other friendly forces. It was a powerful but blind, deaf, and isolated warrior. So, Israel's upgrade strategy became crystal clear. Don't upgrade the muscle, upgrade the eyes, the ears, and the brain. This starts with the eyes, the radar. Imagine a radar upgrade as giving a pilot superhuman vision. The old radar could maybe see one target clearly at a medium range. A modern Israeli radar, like the ones they install on their older F-16s, can see dozens of targets at much greater distances. It can track tiny, stealthy objects. It can resist enemy electronic jamming. It can look down and pick out a car on a highway from high altitude. This single upgrade is a game changer. A pilot with this radar can detect an enemy aircraft long before the enemy detects them. They get the first shot. In air combat, the first shot usually wins. But seeing the enemy is only half the battle. You have to know what to do with that information. This is where the brain comes in, the mission computer and the cockpit displays. 
Israeli upgrades transform the cockpit from a confusing panel of dials into something that looks like a futuristic video game. All the critical data, radar contacts, missile threats, navigation points, fuel status, is fused together on one or two big, colorful screens. The pilot isn't overwhelmed with raw data. Instead, the computer presents a clear, simple picture of the entire battle. It might even suggest the best weapon to use or the safest way to escape a threat. This reduces the pilot's workload dramatically, freeing them up to make smarter, faster tactical decisions. None of this requires a single extra pound of thrust from the engine. Now, let's talk about communication, the jet's ability to talk. An old fighter jet was a lone wolf. A modern fighter jet, after an Israeli-style upgrade, is a team player in a digital pack. Through secure data links, it's constantly chatting with other jets, with early warning planes, with ground control stations, and with drones. Picture this, one jet detects an enemy on its powerful radar, instantly that target's location and speed are shared with every other friendly jet in the sky. A jet that is still out of radar range can now fire a missile guided by the targeting data from its teammate. This is called network-centric warfare, and it's a force multiplier. It turns a group of individual jets into a single super-aware organism. Again, this capability has nothing to do with engine performance. Then there's the most critical system for survival, electronic warfare. Flying into a contested area is like walking into a room filled with invisible laser tripwires. Those tripwires are enemy radars and missile systems. An unupgraded jet walks in blind. It sets off the alarm the moment it enters. A jet upgraded by Israel, however, is like a ninja. It has a suite of electronic tools. It has jammers that blast out noise to blind enemy radars. It has receivers that can instantly identify the type of radar targeting it. It can even release tiny drones that act as decoys, tricking enemy missiles into chasing a fake target. This digital armor allows the jet to slip into areas it has no right to enter, complete its mission, and get out alive. This digital shield is far more valuable for survival than being able to fly 5% faster. Finally, let's talk about weapons. The weapons themselves have gotten smarter, which makes the engine matter less. A modern missile like the Python 5 or the Derby missile used by Israel has incredible range and fire and forget capability. The pilot doesn't have to fly dangerously close to the target. They can lock on from a long distance, fire, and then turn away while the missile's own seeker finds the target. The jet's job is just to get to the right launch point and provide good targeting data. It doesn't need a heroic engine to dash in and out. It needs a good radar to see the target and a good data link to get the latest target information. The most brilliant part of this whole strategy? It never stops evolving, and that's because of software. In the past, an upgrade meant ripping out old metal boxes and welding in new ones. It was slow and expensive. Today, for an upgraded Israeli jet, a huge part of its capability is in its code. When intelligence identifies a new enemy radar system, engineers don't have to build a new piece of hardware, they write new software. That software update, containing the radar's signature and the best way to jam it, is then loaded onto the fighter jet's computers. Suddenly, the entire fleet knows how to counter that new threat. This can happen in weeks. This agility is a superpower. It means your enemy can develop a new weapon and within a month, your entire air force has already learned how to defeat it. This approach also makes incredible financial sense. Developing a brand new engine can cost over $10 billion. For that same amount of money, you can upgrade the radars, computers, and electronic warfare systems on your entire fleet of existing jets, making them 10 times more effective in real combat. You get a bigger bang for your buck. It extends the life of your aircraft by decades. Instead of retiring a good airframe because its electronics are old, you just give it a new digital brain. It's like keeping a classic car's body and engine, but installing a brand new self-driving computer system and a 360-degree camera inside. For Israel, there's another huge benefit. Logistical simplicity. Their mechanics have been working on the same F-16 engines for 30 years. They know every bolt, every common problem, every trick. Warehouses are stocked with spare parts. The supply chain is solid. 
if they introduced a new engine, all of that knowledge and all those parts become obsolete. They'd have to retrain every mechanic, rebuild their supply chains, and deal with years of teething problems. By keeping the old, trusted engine, they get to introduce revolutionary new combat capabilities without disrupting the daily, gritty work of keeping the jets flying. So, does this mean the engine is useless? No, not at all. The engine is still vital. It's the reliable horsepower that gets this incredibly smart system into the air. It provides the power for takeoff, the range to reach the target, and the ability to carry all these new sensors and weapons. The point is that the engine is no longer the differentiator. It's not what makes one jet superior to another. Two jets might have identical engines, but if one has Israeli-level radar, data links, and electronic warfare, it will win that fight 10 times out of 10. The engine is a commodity. The electronic brain is the priceless weapon. This Israeli method is a lesson in pragmatic innovation. It's about solving the real problem, not the assumed one. It's about focusing resources on what delivers the biggest combat payoff. They looked at the modern battlefield, saw that information is king, and built their entire upgrade strategy around dominating the information war. This is the future of air combat. It's not about building a slightly faster jet. It's about building a smarter network. The next generation of pilots won't just be flyers, they'll be battle managers, orchestrating a cloud of sensors and weapons from their glass cockpit. The aircraft that sees first, shares first, and decides first will own the sky. And that aircraft doesn't need a new engine, it just needs a better download. If you found this deep dive into real military strategy fascinating, please support our channel. Hit the like button, it really helps us out. Subscribe to War Tech Zone and ring the notification bell so you never miss one of our breakdowns. We go beyond the headlines to explain how technology actually shapes defense. Now, we want to hear from you. What other military upgrade programs or secretive technologies would you like us to explore next? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.